The real winner in last night's debate, tech news. Yay! <laughs> Google streamed their launch night in event at 11 a.m. local time because it's 2020 and day is night right now. Try to keep up. We got an official unveiling of the Pixel 4a 5G and the Pixel 5, the phone people care about. Curiously, they both have the same processor, a Snapdragon 765G, which is actually a downgrade from the Pixel 4 Snapdragon 855. So maybe you do care about it. This is so stupid. <laughs> The Pixel 5 has shed the Pixel 4 silly motion sensing radar in favor of a punch hole selfie cam, and it's got a 5G support, it just won. A 90 hertz screen, IP68 water resistance finally, reverse wireless charging for Pixel Buds, <laughs> it's like reverse osmosis, you know, and eight gigabytes of RAM for $699. For $499, the Pixel 4 a 5G will get you a 60 hertz display, just six piddly gigabytes of RAM, and a smaller battery, but a larger screen and a headphone jack. Why is the better one not be It's just different. Why are they mutually exclusive? Just, we're all different, James. I'm a Pixel fanboy, I'm mad. But an even better deal might be the new Chromecast with Google TV, which all of us just heard about. Just kidding, there were like full reviews posted a week ago. This one is $49 and comes with a remote to control its Google TV software, which is like a UI that runs on top of Android TV, but it's not the Android app called Google TV, which will replace Google Play Movies and TV. <laughs> it's also not the Google TV that was canceled in 2014. And it's it also won't run Stadia until 2021. What? I'm, ex I'm assuming Stadia will run on the new Nest Audio smart speaker because Mark Ronson loved it. How do you play Stadia on a speaker? They're gonna cancel Stadia anyway. What? They'll just call it, uh, they'll call it Nest Streaming. <laughs> Some fresh leaks may have given us an early look at the specs for AMD's upcoming Zen 3 desktop CPUs and big Navi graphics cards. A combination of benchmarks and spec tables point to AMD releasing four CPUs from the six core Ryzen 5 5600X to the 16 core Ryzen 9 5950X at their event on October 8th. That's right. It looks like there won't be a desktop Ryzen 4000 series irritating everyone who buys these just to display them on the shelf in a numeric order. Now you'll have to explain why the 4000 parts are missing to everyone who sees your little shelf. No. The shelf is ruined. No, what's the point? There goes my child. We also got a look at possible specs for the Radeon RX 6900 XT. Nice. 6800 XT and 67 XT. 6700 XT. Yeah, thanks to a data table that was apparently accidentally included in the New Egg Insider newsletter. Super inside. <laughs> I think that's what the kids call a big oof. That's uh, what I see on my Twitter a lot anyway. Oh, I, I say that. If it's legit, the 6900 XT will have 5,120 stream processors and 16 gigabytes of RAM, which sounds like it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the RTX 3080. But I still think the craziest thing about these GPUs are the code names. Dim Grey Cavefish? <laughs> Sienna Surchild? Sir Cichlid. I, I, Cichlid? Cichlid? I don't know. Is this RuPaul's Drag Race? <laughs> and if you thought Apple and Epic Games' legal fight would soon be sorted out, oh, you sweet, sweet summer child, you naive little wuss. Idiot. The, the, <laughs> the preliminary hearing on Monday was only the beginning, as it looks like the case won't be resolved until summer 2021, if the Earth is even around at that time. <laughs> we'll but Google, who's also being sued by Epic, has actually made a change in response to Epic's accusations. The company has announced that next year's Android 12 will make it easier to install and use third-party app stores other than the Play Store, something Epic specifically called for. However, starting next year, Google is also going to start actually enforcing its policy requiring Play Store apps to use Google Pay for in-app purchases, which the company was pretty chill about previously, so... Six one, half a dozen the other. If there's suddenly going to be a ton of app stores on Android, well, Google needs their cut. And so do we, which is why TechLinked, yes, TechLinked, now costs $30 an episode. Thank you, I'm getting at least 50 cents of that. <laughs> now it's time for the quick bits, brought to you by the Drop Enter Mechanical Keyboard. It sounds for Enter. It's a new model from Drop.com made with enthusiast grade materials. It's got an aluminum top plate, plastic bottom plate, and PBT keycaps with double shot shine through. You can get this bad boy in three colors and equip it with your choice of mechanical switches, so if all that speaks to you, then speak back. Pick up the phone, dial now, get it at drop.com. <laughs> Quick bits. Quick bits never changes. Lenovo has put the world's first 
PC with a foldable display, the X1 Fold, up for pre-order, and appropriately, it looks like a bigger version of the Galaxy Fold. It's also running an Intel Lakefield processor, which doesn't bode well for its overall performance. But I remember this thing being pretty cool at CES, so maybe it will impress us with its great attitude. <laughs> 10 out of 10 personality. Lenovo also launched the Ultralight ThinkPad X1 Nano and the ThinkBook 15 Gen 2, a laptop with a little slide out tray for its included wireless earbuds. What? Or your hot chocolate. Oh. Working from home means that there's a blurrier line between work and home than ever before, but Microsoft wants to fix this by offering its employees a virtual commute. It will do things like remind workers about the end of the workday and suggest wind down tasks like guided meditation. Oh. Weird, I was thinking something more like pretending to fly to work every day in flight simulator, but we can do the deep breathing thing if you want. Do it while you're flying. This is good. It's nice up there. Silent retreat. Amazon has announced Amazon One, a new system that will allow customers to pay for things with their handprint. It'll roll out initially at two Amazon Go stores in Seattle. And if you're worried about hygiene, you don't get to touch anything. You just, you just hover your hand there like it's a high five from Demolition Man. <clears throat> Israeli researchers have developed a wearable electrocephalogram, an EEG device that they claim can predict epileptic seizures one hour before they happen with 97% accuracy. I wasn't expecting to read this. This is crazy. Oh. Am I Tom Cruise? <laughs> Speaking of Tom Cruise, for some reason, first responders might be the first people to get jetpacks. The famous Iron Man jet suit made by Gravity Industries is being tested by the UK's Great North Air Ambulance Service as a, a means of possibly getting medics to fly to victims who have been injured out in nature somewhere. Wow. Preferably on precipices with eagles attacking them and they just shoot up their <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> I guess if we as a society are giving out jetpacks to people, medical professionals should get them first. I mean, I guess. Just I'll allow it. let them have it. Tech reviewers should get them first. It's true. We must accept it, Riley, and we also must accept that this episode is over. So come back on Friday for more tech news, because if you thought this stuff was good, oh man. <laughs> oh. Don't get me started on Fridays. Cool, that... I could talk all day. <laughs> on a Friday? Oh, Friday news. Ba 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 ba. Oh, baby.